I had an idea for a laser cut wood lamp that uses two different shades, one that's lighter in color and another that's darker. As I was sketching the idea, I used one of my favorite lamp designs as a reference point. It's constructed with two circular frames with angled notches evenly spaced around the perimeter. What creates the dynamic form of the lamp is the offset panel that shifts up and down around the frames. The design is really in the shape of the panel, which is what I'm focusing on with my sketches. I went through lots of variations for the shape of the panel, but my goal was to create a panel that would resemble the layers of a pine cone when a lamp is fully assembled. Every component for this project will be laser cut, which means that the design will start as a series of flat pieces that are attached to each other to create the product. Using the design file I created for the ocean lamp in a software called Rhinoceros, I start by deleting the panel types and creating the design from my sketch. This is where I get to refine my designs by giving each line and curve realistic dimensions. To design the panel, I start by drawing a line to the full height of one piece, which will be 8 inches. I draw a few horizontal lines that represent the depth of the panel and the different sections where I'll create the curves for my sketch. The lines are guides that I'll delete later, but they help me figure out where each point along the curve should start and end. After the rough shape of each curve is created, I add additional curves at the small inner corners between each one. This will create a continuous curve that flows from the top to the bottom of the panel. Now I'll delete and trim all the excess lines from the panel for a clean design. This is panel type A. I copy it over to the right to create panel type B where the difference will be the location of the slots on the left where it will be joined with the circular frames. To avoid wasting any material, I'll create a 3D model of this design and assemble every piece. I do this by extruding each frame and shape and using the move and rotate features to move the pieces into place. I also use the polar array tool to create copies around a circular frame. I actually messed that part up here because the pieces are all overlapping. I didn't like how the product looked so we'll go back to the drawing board. The first refinement was to move the inner corners outwards to make each curve flow into one another better. The second refinement was shifting the location of the slots on the panel. Now I'll create another 3D model to check the design. This is how the models came out. This final version works very well where panel A and B covers the void between each panel which will block direct views of the light bulb at the center while reflecting light off of the beautiful wood finishes of the light and dark colored plywood. I bring over my 8th inch eco birch plywood in two different tones and mask them with paper tape to protect the surface from scorches and burns from the laser. I insert one sheet into my laser cutter and start the process of cutting this project. One of the questions that I've been asked the most is how long it took me to learn how to design my products in Rhinoceros. I started using computer-aided design software, which is also known as CAD, in architecture school back in 2010. It took about a month to get a general understanding of how everything worked, but since that time, I think all CAD software has become a lot more intuitive to use where all the tools are icons that you can find, click, and use. There are so many tutorials here on YouTube that go a lot deeper than how I use the software. If you're new to using CAD software for designing laser and CNC products, just keep dabbling in the software as regularly as you can and you'll get better with every project. This is the first time I'm making a product with two different wood finishes and I'm excited to see how it comes out. For this pinecone inspired lamp, it took a total of 40 minutes to cut all of the pieces. Once I have all of the pieces, I bring them over to my work table and remove the paper masking tape from each piece. I start the assembly process by attaching one of the panels to both circular frames. To do that, I'll use a glue called MaxiCure, which is what I use on all my projects and I apply it in the slots of one panel type. I bring over the base frame, align the slots, and push them together. I repeat this with the top frame. Now we have a solid attachment and as we attach the remaining panels, the slots will align more precisely and the product will hold itself up. Instead of applying glue to the slots in the panels, I apply it to the slots in both frames. I'll be attaching multiple panels at a time, so I make sure I apply glue to a bunch of slots of both frames. Now we can attach the next panel type and we'll alternate as we go. Since I cut the two panel types out of two different colors of wood, it's easy for me to organize them and alternate. As I repeat this with each of the panels, I can start to see the lampshade coming together. One by one, each of the panels start to create the overall form of the pine cone, which matches the 3D model that I created earlier. 
I bring over my light fixture kit and light bulb, install them into the pinecone inspired table lamp, and the project is complete. I love how the two tones of wood comes together to create a visually dynamic lamp. Shifting the curves from a vertical shape at the bottom to a horizontal and longer one at the top made this lamp look like the layers of a pinecone. If you enjoyed this project, check out my other woodcraft videos and consider subscribing. I'll see you again next week. Thank you.